So last week we had a chance to talk with Tesla Herbert about his milestones, his catalyst for the future of Tesla and what it all means. In this part two, we're going to discuss all the things that are still coming up for this year later and even next year. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Hello, Herbert. How are you still? I'm doing great. Hey, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> we're pretending it's a different day instead of three minutes after the last one concluded. So last week, you can find the link in the description, we talked about all the catalysts that have already happened this year, and now we're talking about the ones yet to come later this year, we believe, and beyond. We should just go right into it. Tesla Energy, formerly known as Gambit Energy, live in Texas or one new state, you think that's going to be in Q3? I don't know if it's going to be in Q3, but this is a big, big deal, and it may not move the stock right away, but it's one of those moment. It's like it's like a total new. It, it it will show you that the business model for Tesla is not just cars. They're going to do truly Tesla energy. So what when this you is, look at how much money they made in in Southern Australia, in South Australia, on right. the Queensland place, uh, it it paid for itself in like a year or two. That's right. And it was a hundred million dollar project. Project. This. I've got a whole video on the, you know, the 200, I don't remember the number I had, a massive, massive number. But they could make billions a month off running their own energy utility. So just think what you just said. Tesla is going to be their own, it's going to be a brand new utility company. Like, you know, like Pacific Gas and Energy, you know, like a pg and &E, right? It's like, what? Right. How do you, how do analysts miss this? <laughs> All of us, I think even us Tesla bulls are kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, energy will come. It's going to come next year or longer. It, it, you're right. It might be a year. But this is going to be a major milestone because here's what's happening, right? So Tesla has a company called Tesla Energy Ventures, as you pointed out, and it was approved in 2021. And they were approved in Texas uh, to become a retail electricity provider. And so what they're going to be able to do is be able to kind of become a virtual power plant. And they're able to take the electricity from all these power walls um, and then deliver them and sell, resell that energy electricity when the prices are high. So whether it's a drought, uh, an emergency, or just when, when there's usage that's really high. So I'm actively hoping that Texas was approved, so now they can actually be and a utility in Texas, and I want to. I'm waiting till they say this is now live. They're actually doing, it. and like you say, they're already doing this in the UK, in um, UK and Australia, and so it's just you know Texas. And then once they do Texas, right? What's going to happen next? They're going to just go state by state, just like insurance. <laughs> so I don't know if you know this, but in uh, Texas, they're expanding the switchyard. And somebody said, well, if the switchyard's already big enough, what do they need another one for? And I found the answer. Oh. The new switchyard is not connected to the same grid, uh, to the same energy provider. The new one has a longer approval process because the existing one is a retail provider oh. and the new one's connecting to the wholesale provider. Right, That right. will be their wholesale site. So yeah. that's oh, very exciting. Brian, I saw, I'm so in, uh, in, impressed with you because you're... Your, your deep dives in the factories and your knowledge of all these things you just talked about, it just doesn't exist anywhere else, by the way. So you're pretty on top of things and you've got, you got your finger in the pulse of all these, you know, what's happening in every, <laughs> every place. So I'm just impressed with you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, I may have spent a little bit of time on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, I know. We talked about it earlier. You kind of like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I live and breathe this stuff, man. Um, so super quick, annual shareholder meeting with the right. split approval. I don't think we need to cover that. Yeah. Stock split itself. AI day two. Yeah. So what do you think? What do you, what do you expect to happen? I believe that the prototype is nowhere close to finished, but it will be within minutes of the start of the, of the event. You know, like how the Model X doors didn't work Last like, yeah, yeah. the morning of the demo, yeah. how the Cybertruck was only 
mostly finished about three days before, but that it'll be something impressive. We already know it's not going to look like what we've seen already. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's got uh, two extra arms, little stubby guy for other utilities. You got to <laughs> need two hands, but also to hold something. You got that. Um, I think it will have, if there's a prototype, it will have some capacity with a wow factor. Yeah. And it will mostly work, you know, like Cyberglass. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we go there, I, I, I don't think we should just uh, jump over stock split so quickly. Okay. Because it is, as we all know, a very potentially big stock catalyst and a big milestone. Okay. So just very, I know everybody knows this already. They've announced three for one uh, stock split, but everybody understands that in in the annual shareholder meeting, they're going to officially approve the additional shares uh, and then be able to then do the actual stock split. But the stock split itself won't happen until August 22nd. Right. So the shareholder meeting, August 4th, stock split actually happens on August 22nd. The last time this happened in those 20 days, uh, Tesla stock went up by 80%. So I don't think any of us are expecting it to go 80%, especially with the macro environment that we're in. But it should go up because all the other stocks, as we saw, Amazon and Google, as, as we saw when they announced their stocks, but it, it, it went up. So it should go up somewhat. Okay. Well, I've seen conflicting um, reports on the lasting effect of a stock split. But the reason I would agree with you that it's different in Tesla's case is because for small retail investors, of which Tesla commands an inordinate percentage, 700, 1,000, 1,500 for a share is difficult. Do you want low-level retail investors to have to save up for two months to buy one share? Yeah. So what Fun are you expecting? Really. So I agree. So AI Day 2 is coming up in September 30th, right? And so I actually have a different, um, slightly different opinion than what you said and what most people are saying, right? So they're going, remember, AI Day initially was scheduled for August 14th or something, that August 17th. And then he came out and said, oh, it's not going to be there. We're going to do September 30th. We, you know, we may have a prototype demo at that time. So the initial reaction is, oh, yeah, they're delayed again, right? They're, they're, they need to push back because they won't be able to do it. I'm optimistic. I, I'm just thinking maybe what actually happened was he saw a demo of the current protype and thought it was great and exciting. It's happened. You know, they're all set and ready to present. But then he goes, you know what? I want a wow. I want something, I want it to do something big. And that's why he's pushed it back to September 30th. I want you to make it do this and I'll give you a month to do it. It's, it's a wishful thinking on my part. But um, so if you were, if you were about to launch the Tesla bot, Brian, and it's not just about the bot, right? It's a humanoid bot. Every, a number of manufacturers are able to show very, very exciting humanoid bots, but the difference between Tesla and others is the brains, the AI, right? The FSD for that. So what, what kind of, what would you show people that this bot can do that's using its brain that no other bot has ever had before? <laughs> Boy, that's tough. Um, Cause yeah, we've seen them dance badly. We've seen them do a lot of things like that. Yeah, they do flips and all that. And the best thing that I've seen is you watch the Boston Dynamic bot after it does its flips and all that. It walks out the uh, factory doors and it pushes the door out and walks out. But when you look closely at the video, you'll see QR codes. So clearly this bot has been programmed. You know, push your hand right here. <laughs> okay, I've got a theory. I've got a theory. Here's how you prove that the AI is the difference is you have a table full of props and tools and two dice with, with a prop and a command and you roll them and whatever it lands on, you just speak it and the bot does it. I love it. See that, that I, I, I haven't thought of that, but that would be a wonderful, a wonderful kind of uh, example of the bot is, is, and that in some sort of, of um, instructions, like verbal instruction, right? do yeah. this and do that and then watch it do it not just you know i'm going to press play on the video and watch it do it right right so because that would be that would be a wow yeah so that's what i think is going to be for the the bot but i'm i'm excited and then the other thing about the prototype is if we remember tesla every time they show you a prototype it's not a prototype it is the prototype of what they're going to launch and you know the cyber truck yes they made a lot of changes to it and when we actually see the changes 
but it's not going to change dramatically, right? It's, sure. it's fine tuned. So whatever well, they show back, you, yeah. that's what they're going to produce. If you look back at the S, X, and 3 right. prototypes, they are different, but not fundamentally. Exactly. As opposed to, yeah. if you look at the Mercedes EQS, the prototype was rad. The CGI was radical. The right. prototype was still pretty hot. And then they unveiled it, and it's just the <laughs> ugly, the it grill. like yeah, yeah, yeah. six Taurus. <laughs> That's just, what do you, but. Uh, but I will say that it's not going to look like the, the mannequin that we all saw. The dancing no. bot, um, and we and Elon has confirmed that. Yes, he did. And the reason I think he did that was he he announced that their Tesla is going to do a bot. The first you know order of business is not to scare anybody, right? Oh, you can right. say stop, stop, stop. Oh, it's still going to only be able to do fifty pounds. You can outrun it. It doesn't want to scare people. You know, they show a weak, short bot, but the reality is it's going to have to be bulky. It's going to have to have batteries. It's going to have you know they're going to take time to fine tune it. But um, AI day two is not just the bot, right? And and I was thinking, hmm, you see, if you see my list, I had Dojo launch in Q4. It's a way down to the line there. So I think that Dojo might have to be on September 30th as well. So oh, wow. why would he say, he announce a new AI day too? And uh, unless they had something to say. And so last AI day one, they revealed Dojo. Right, a new supercomputer that's going to have teraflops of you know capability. It's going to change neural networks, and then he said the mark that he will let the AI team for FSD beta robotaxi team to decide when to switch. And the day that they decide to switch from their current supercomputers and move to the Dojo, that's when they'll turn on Dojo. So Dojo needs to prove itself that it's better than their current. But wouldn't it be kind of embarrassing if they do AI Day Two in September? And they go, oh, we're still working on Dojo. It's going to come up maybe in the second last half of this year. Don't you think that's going to be like weird? They got to be able to say, hey, we announced Dojo last year, AIT2, it's live. No? Especially with all the, they had the, the chip fab was already ready. It's just that when you go wafer scale, your uh, tolerance for errors gets exponentially harder. But if you have to make a hundred wafers to get one good one, it's worth it. I I, I don't know, but I mean, it, it's got to be it's got to be Dojo live, or or I'm okay if they say Dojo is going to be live in three months, but they can't say we're still working on Dojo. <laughs> right, I would I I would agree with that. That's weird. So I I think the Dojo one is going to be moved up. I moved it further down the line because uh, I think just. Uh, research and uh, people were talking to saying that they're just not going to be able to do that in time. And it's it's one of those interesting things where this is a supercomputer that normally most other companies won't be able to produce in two, three, four, five years. And here we are kind of like disappointed that it it's like a year later. How come it's not here yet? <laughs> well, if they launch it on September 30th, your estimate is only off by one day. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, Q4. <laughs> Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, math, my friend. <laughs> um, love you. I love you, buddy. Yeah. So, so yeah. investment grade credit rating in Q3, yeah. so, I think this has got to happen. It's got to happen. Um, I'm actually going to be interviewing Alexandra, who worked for the S&P, and have a deep dive on this. But as we all know, kind of, it's kind of shocking that a trillion-dollar company is the only, Tesla is the only trillion-dollar company that's still not investment grade rate, credit rating. And we all know that there's a lot of politics and kind of shenanigans going on around that, right? What so, kind of profit margin do we need to get a, a how yeah. low does the debt need to get? I mean, so this is they ridiculous. said that EBITDA uh, margins have to maintain above 18% and Tesla is over 30%. So it's just, it's all bull at this point, right? You got to have cash on hand, you have to have cash flow, you have to have um, uh, no debt. And you have to have a bit. And we all know Tesla's blown this way. And you saw, have you seen um, Alexandra's table that she published? With the other companies in the S&P yeah. 500 that, that have a higher rating, yeah. but are <laughs> garbage? Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's, yeah. it's, it's clearly political. So, But, you know, there's a point when they can't do it anymore. And so everybody's, including Alexandra, Gary Black, are expecting that. In Just the like inclusion in the S&P, uh, yeah. in the S&P 500, that was... 
a year late. Right. And with the credit upgrade, that is a catalyst because it, yes. there are institutions that cannot buy Tesla stock for their funds, for their retirements, for their pensions, unless they have a good credit rating, which they don't. And, and the other thing about the stock. stock split and an investment grade credit rating together is that there's a chance that Tesla might make it into the Dow Jones and another massive, just like the S&P introduction, could be another kind of level up in who can invest, right? And who must invest, <laughs> right? Uh, okay, so the, the next one after that is uh, Q2 earnings again. Uh, we already talked about that it's not gonna be record revenue. This is not gonna happen. It's, it's, it's not, I do not see that happening. Although, um, you know, if, if at the last minute they start pushing enhanced autopilot, you can recognize all of that revenue instead of some because yes. enhanced autopilot is a finished product, but it would take an awful lot to beat yeah. Q1 with Shanghai having been So closed. the good news is that for it to be a stock catalyst, it it's not going to happen. You're not going to see a record revenue, unfortunately, but it just needs to be better. They need to just surprise the estimates. Um, so right. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. 4680. Uh, yeah, so 4680 in scale production. We all know 4680 is in production today, right? In limited production. Mm -hmm. We know that there was challenges in creating 4680. And you heard in the last interview that Elon just did with the Tesla owners of Silicon Valley that they just released today, this morning, they talked about, Elon talked about how it was so challenging to create the 4680 that they had to get the 2170s. But the problem was the machinery and the tooling for the 2170s were stuck in China and they couldn't get it. So they need to mitigate the 4680 kind of uh, the ramp up is going to be very slow. And then they're now creating 2170 variants of the car to replace to kind of kind of uh, mitigate that. Um, so I think scale production is way down the line. Um, I just I don't know what the number what scale production means exactly. I, I don't know what the definition of volume production um, what, what that exactly means. So I would say a couple thousand a week would be scale. Okay. I need it, I, I need mean? people to tell me what they think scale production. That, that would be my thought. Yeah. Um, obviously, obviously 7,000 cars a week would be full scale production, but a couple thousand to me, 2,000 cars a week would be scale. Okay. I'll, I'll rely on you, Brian. You send me a note <laughs> when you think right. we've hit that. Okay. <laughs> sure. Um, FSD wide release. Okay. So this definition I think is clearer. Uh, which is okay. the ability to have FSD turn like you don't have to request and don't do need safety score. You don't have to go get it. To, you know, wait for it to be attacked. It's just a, a toggle on in your car if you've bought either the monthly or the FSD capability in the car, and it's just available. Elon's talking about a million cars by the end of the year. I actually don't know where he comes up with that number because it sh it it can't just be the number of cars that are capable of it. It's got to be the number of people who buy a a monthly and or right the license for it do you think we're going to get a million no no i think there's only when the nitsa report came out i think there was only 830,000 ap enabled cars in the us enabled right well yeah and, you know autopilot right. because the rest of the 2 million that we've sold have been overseas so I don't know unless he gives people a three month free, like, a, a, you know, try it for a month free, then maybe he can claim that we have a million who've tried FSD beta or FSD, right? It's now wide release with a million. I don't know. So I would agree with you. Wide release is available, not necessarily yeah. that everyone has chosen to purchase it. Yeah, exactly. So this is just wide release available, not the million. The million is his own estimate, a separate estimate. Um, first quarter with 400,000 units delivered. So these were a, a few people that told me that that's a, that's a key milestone. That's a significant milestone, 400,000, you know, breaking that barrier. Uh, what do you think about that? I don't know if it's a barrier. That only gets us to 1.2 million. And I think, I think we might see that in Q3. That's, some people told me the same thing. And so the reason I put Q4 there, just so you're, you're aware, is that it will be a Q3 number. It's just that you don't, we don't find out about it until Q4, right? So it happens in the third week on the Q on the next month. Gotcha. 
Yeah. Gotcha. Or actually, well, no, I'm sorry. No. We're going to find out within understand. days after Q3. So yes, I can actually put Q3, but it's actually, you know, that's why I put a Q4 because I, I'm going, right. Right. Q4. <laughs> All right. Well, we're on the same page. Yeah. Well, once again, uh, these interviews kind of run long sometimes. Tesla Herbert was so gracious with his time, and yeah, we got to Gabin. And so there's going to be a part three coming up in a few days. Stay tuned for that. We got a lot more to cover. In the meantime, mad thanks to my Patreons who get early access, bonus content, and all kinds of great stuff that you won't see on the main channel. Thank you guys for your decision to support the channel and, you know, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots in part three, I suppose.